This is something that someone could do at home though, isn't it? Exactly. They, like easy, they yeah. could tape up their shoe, yeah. they could find their first metatarsal, they and can then align it with their align front cleat. Yeah. Let's, see, let's test again, let's do yeah. one more back. If you were at home and you wanted to right. start, like in, from a start point, yeah. get a broom, put it on the floor, line it up with the... With the with centre pedal, yeah, of course. And you centre can of the pedal where is, yeah. and where your knee is. The biggest, the biggest difference is my yeah. drive back, angle back the, relative yeah. to my hips to, to, the, to the feet, effectively yeah. the cleats. And I think the Welcome back to The What Life. Today I have come to Pearson's Cycles, which is one of the oldest cycle shops in the UK. I've come to meet Naz for a professional bike fit. And I am gonna ask him all the questions that first pop into my head so that if you are ever thinking about going for a bike fit or you have questions about a bike fit, I'm basically gonna ask all the silly questions or the reasonable questions that might sound silly because you're talking to a professional so that you don't have to and you can sound like you know what you're talking about because I certainly don't. Let's go. Just a quick one to say that we have done a video on a Pearson Shift Aero Bike build that I will link at the top. We're gonna to answer all sorts of questions today, but things like, you know, these fixed bar and stems, like how do you factor that into when you, when you buy a bike or when you're choosing to buy a bike? You know, if you need to make sure that you've got a good idea in your head what is applicable to you before you go buying an aero bar, like a fixed bar and stem or a one piece bar and stem. So as I said, this is Naz who's taking me through my bike fit and you work at Pearson's. How long have you been in the bike fitting industry? Uh, so just coming up to about nine years now in the bike industry. So you know your onions. Yeah. Okay, what's the first thing that happens or do you wanna just talk me through like a little bit not too long, but like, you know, we'll do this, then we'll do this, then we'll do that. Right. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, today you've come in with your bike. So the idea here today is to achieve what we think is the optimal riding position for your cycling. Um, I need your bike so that I can have an assessment of the kind of way you've been riding. Um, but then we're going to perform a bike fit in certain stages. So part of the bike fit is a bit more consultation based, focused on you. Second part is actually to do perform a physical fit using machine based uh, stuff. And then third element is to actually come back to your bike and look at right what changes do we need to make to get you in the right position. Okay, so one quick question for you. Is a bike fit like getting dressed in the morning, like pants first, socks seconds, trousers, and then you just don't change, like, and then you go out the door and you're done? Or is it like, you know, little tweaks yeah. coming back and forward, like changing, do you see what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Like, look, the thing is, the, the, to do a bike fit, this, this whole process can take, you know, three to four hours as a one-off session. That doesn't mean we've, we've solved everything. It means that that's the position we're gonna start with. We're then gonna go out for a period of time, do some riding, and then it might take uh, a few more visits to actually fine tune it and tweak it and get it perfect. We actually need you to give me that feedback once we've done fit today on what you actually feel so that we can actually make it Perfect, but yeah, it's not always solved in a one-off session. Uh, this is the bulk, and then it might be a couple of uh, follow-ups to actually really fine-tune it. Okay, so um, to make this interesting for guys that might be watching and thinking like, well, I'm watching a bike fit, but that's Max's bike fit. Right. My question is like, if I have a slightly lower back and I have to like tweak the stem length, or I have a, a tight shoulders and I have to change the the bar width or something like that. I, I don't know whether those are actually yeah. related, but like, is it because it's relevant to someone who has a tight lower back, does that become relevant to other people who have a tight lower back or? Occasionally there are certain things that translate, like if there's a certain issue that we've seen before, it, for example, if the saddle is too high, it might cause a series of consequences which might be consistent, but it doesn't always work like that. I think bike fit is very personal. Um, we, we're working with the, what your ability is, everything that you have going on, and it's actually to try to improve your riding. It doesn't always work for someone else to do something that you've done. So first thing we're gonna do is, Naz is taking some measurements of how I've set my bike up now, and this setup is entirely based on my, what, I think 18 months of riding it and tweaking it and small little changes. Um, I'm currently running 175 cranks. I, I actually don't, I don't know whether that's the correct length. I don't know what the correct length of a crank is. I don't know why anyone would know what the correct crank length necessarily is without coming and doing something like this. Um, other than that, it's a 56 frame and, oh, I wish I knew what the stem was, but I'm sure Naz can tell me, tell me in a second. 
That's a 90 stem. 90, 90 mil stem. So the one thing that I have found, it'll be interesting to see, is I, I find that the, the bar width on this, which I think is 340, might, that might be wrong, um, is a little bit wide, and I kind of want to narrow it up a little bit. So first up, bike measurements. What is that, minus five, five, degrees. minus five degrees on the saddle, almost minus six. So one thing we're going to chat about today is why I actually tilt my saddle as far forward as it is. Would you say, Naz, that's quite a well-tilted saddle? That's a very well-tilted saddle. I'm surprised <laughs> you managed to stay on the bike. <laughs> Um, there is a reason for it that I will kind of go into in a little bit as to because of my own personal uh, physiology like the way that my my body is designed I have a really I, I have really tight hamstrings you know, I struggle to touch my toes so in actual fact tilting my hips forward um, isn't quite as easy as just bending my back because I have a tight lower back my posterior chain basically is terrible my mobility in my posterior chain and it I felt that has stopped me from engaging things like my hamstrings and then really kind of working my quads. So that's why I've tilted my saddle to five, almost 6% forward. Is there like a regular, like what would you normally say? Is it normally? Uh, it, it varies. I think a lot of the time when people tilt their saddle forward, it's, a, it's simply a way of compensating something going on on the bike fit. And it's a way of you alleviating whether it's pressure or pain or or just able to get into a position but by doing that it doesn't offer the saddle is not actually correctly doing what it's kind of designed to do for you so from a pressure point of view from a pressure point of view even a support point of view and actually having the right position to you know drive your, you know, your feet through the pedals correctly when you when you nose a saddle like that just it drives the body weight towards the front of the bike so you're you, you're probably loading up quite a lot of weight through the front of the bike as a consequence of falling forward through the saddle. But at the end of the day, it's something you've got used to and it's kind of building up, yeah, yeah. something that we may be able to actually improve on it yeah. um, with the bike fit. So. I'll also add that I have a strength background. So I have a little bit of shoulder strength prior to being a cyclist, which I think probably means it, that it's it, not quite exactly. such an aggressive yeah. position so, to So yeah, me. you know, your weight on the front of the bike is probably not really a thing to you. Um, but yeah, there'll be certain ways we test for that to see if it gets any better. So if you could turn your feet into that position for me. So what I'm feeling for through your shoe is following your foot and finding this first metatarsal, uh, sort of the knuckle of the big toe, and just where it protrudes the most to try to just pinpoint that throughout your shoe. And it's a guide that we're going to use later when we set cleat position. And you were saying that cleat position is actually one of the... I would say cleat position is, an, is it's one of the things people would usually think is like the biggest driving factor of why something's wrong or alignment and pain or whatever but actually speaking you're it's probably more related to the foot and shoe how the foot sits within the shoe are you even in the right shoes do they control and stabilize your feet properly the actual range of adjustment that you have for the cleat is quite small so you can't get that terribly wrong um there are of course ways you can get it wrong but actually i would say more importantly we've got to assess your feet and see if you have got sufficient enough contact throughout the, throughout the shoe. So that's quite interesting, even just like doing that, right? You can see that, I mean, from, really yeah, yeah, from like, from, even from feel, like even if you're mildly close, there's still a big difference. There's still a difference, yeah. yeah. So that's part of the assessment we're gonna do now is we're looking for differences that, differences in like physical things, but also that could be feeling. You might feel you're more, uh, you're able to extend on one side long, better than the other. So we're just gonna have a look at that and just see if there's a, any consistencies with, with that. If one side is stronger than the other, if one side's more dominant. Naturally, we do have a dominant side where we feel more coordinated. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna go through that now. So this device we're using is very much, not just something cycling related, it's a Braddock shoe device. It's just a long lasting way of measuring the feet. So already, without doing anything, there's already a difference. Quite a big one. You have, in a standing position, loading up on your legs, there's about half size in length differences between left and right foot. Left foot coming up 43 and a half, right foot coming up 44. That's without actually, you know, kind of put, putting more pressure on the feet. This is you in a standing position. What I want you to do now is bend through your knees a little bit. Just see if the, how that changes, if it does change. 
So as you put a little bit more load, especially on that left side, foot does tend to expand down a little bit and lengthen a little bit more, but still, I would say overall, about a half size difference, just in length. So length is measured from heel to top of the big toe. So 44 right, 43 and a half. I mean, I can see that because my, my right side is slightly collapsed. Yeah. Uh, when you use, when you, you were using look compatible cleats, they actually put a little line on the center of the cleat here. That is to indicate where the center of the pedal would be. So if you were comparing that up against that marker there, we can see that there is clearly four foot, uh, cent, first met head is in front of that position. Again, how much by? Maybe just close to about a centimeter. It's a, it's a minimum amount I would think is, is useful. Yeah, so we just set up the custom fitted jig to what my measurements on my bike are, and then we're gonna tweak a few things. And a part of a bike fit, from my understanding, is a little bit of let's see how things feel, which obviously you can't do on your bike, you have to go and buy new components or, or change things, you know, or you might even jump on a friend's bike and find that he's got narrower bars and it feels more comfortable, and things like that. So this is the kind of efficient way of being able to try a ton of variable different options ultimately before you decide what you are going to put on your bike. I think that's the best way to describe that's a good it. Way of summarizing, yeah. Yeah. So my, my biggest interest is how a bike fit can actually help me improve in terms of like activating the right muscle groups. Because when yeah. I first started cycling, the one thing I realized was my quads were really weak. Right. So I'd be doing bike sessions, having done a load of running and really worked on my hamstrings. And I'd be like, why are my quads feel like they're taking so much of a, okay. because they hadn't quite caught up yet. So would you, um, you said, would you, would you be getting quite a bit of quad overload on the bike or is it not? It, I don't think it was overload. I just think it was like, if I tweaking, by tweaking my position, yeah. I was realizing that I can affect how much I engage different parts of my pedal stroke. Yeah. Which as a reasonably new cyclist or as a developing cyclist, I was having to then wait for the muscles to like catch up with my <laughs> performance, yeah. if, you make it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, I guess what I'm trying to do now is find a fit that is as efficient as possible for, you know, hamster, using, my, yeah. my, my pedal stroke, basically. Okay. Right, things that happen to me when I ride my bike. I've tilted my saddle forward. I get no pain when I cycle. Right. None. No pain. Like, like, okay. So I'm not like, this isn't like I have a pain issue, I'm yep. trying to solve a problem, right? Um, I don't get knee pain, I don't get lower back pain, I don't get shoulder pain. Um, the things that I can't do, that I see other riders do, is sit on the drops like that and get my forearms resting comfortably on the bar. Okay. And I spent a bit of time kind of tilting my bars up, tilting my, to try and find that position, the yeah. best position. Is that more you're related to when you're doing indoor kind of hard efforts or is that even out? out no, outdoors. It's all right. to outdoors. Okay, fine. Obviously indoors, I do actually try and get in good habits of yeah. sitting at least like that. And obviously there's no consequence to doing that on a trainer. But outdoors, I understand that obviously the biggest thing I can change to be efficient is being as aero as possible. Yeah. Um, so I guess the reason for having a bike fit would be I want to be able to hold that position where I can sit up on the <coughs> hoods, but forearms down. Yeah. And is, if that is a mobility issue for me, or is that a fit issue for the bike, or is it a combination of the both? Fine, I'll have a look. Because I find myself kind of like this. Yeah. So forearms off the bar. Yeah. Taking the strain in my shoulders. Your shoulders, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. But luckily I, yeah. I work out. <laughs> <laughs> my pedal stroke, I wonder like, how high is my heel meant to be? These are the questions I don't really know that, yep. that I've, you know. So is my heel meant to be staying really high or kind of rotating round? Like, is there a <clears throat> ideal height for a heel? So there's definitely things, again, back to kind of where people make compromises for the position they're in. They kind of try to do something to make that movement easier. As of a first look, if I was just kind of assessing your bike fit just by look. I would say there's certainly a kind of potential issue with weight distribution. A lot of your weight is driven forward towards the front of the bike. Not that that is a problem, but it is the reason why you're doing lots of series of things. One of them is lifting of the heel 
um, especially towards the top back part of the pedal stroke. The only other kind of visual thing I might say and see you tell me if you feel it is there's a kind of sign that potentially you're a bit cramped up. Potentially you, you're looking for more space but you're, you're finding it by absorbing it into the arms, back and shoulders. And that might just be where the handlebar position is, but do you have that sense of feeling? Oh, yeah, like my, feel my arms are in, like, as in... Fully engaged, yeah. Yeah, like my, yeah. My, fo my forearms and more importantly my biceps, they are in, like, yeah. engaged when I'm like this. So if we did a little quick experiment, as you're pedaling, if you were to stay in that position and take one hand off the bike, does it quite heavily load up that left side to um, stabilise you or is it... Yeah, you definitely feel, you feel a sense more, of more pressure coming through. And again, if you take the left hand off to the right, yeah, you, like you, you feel that load. Yeah, and, and like even just like tuck, like I can, you see what I mean? Like I can yeah. feel more. It's my tricep. Like my bicep's actually not really working. It's that tricep. That's right. Yeah. So I'm going to do one test with you on this bike before, so that we can retest it once we finish to see if we make made an improvement. I want you to go down into the drops. I need you to keep the load going through the pedals. Don't stop pedaling. And you're going to try a, a balance test. That is going to involve you staying on the saddle, keep pedaling, and for about two or three seconds, I want you to remove your hands, both of them off the bike, oh. and see what happens. I honestly don't think I could, because my chest will... <laughs> you feel my, that's fine. My, just my, give my... it a shot, and then just drop back down as soon as you need to. And then back on. <laughs> okay, so, the reason I want to do that is just to show, at the moment, your body is very reliant on the front of the bike. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm going to be looking to improve on, not being so reliant. <laughs> on the front of the bike. So, um, okay, good, come to a stop. Let's uh, leave it like that. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I am going to raise your saddle in small increments. We're gonna work with three millimeters at a time. Every three millimeter change, so from this point going upwards, you're just gonna feed back whether you felt that it became easier to pedal. You might say it became harder to pedal. You might say, I couldn't tell the difference. It was just three mil, I didn't tell the difference. But gradually as we do it, we're gonna find the right saddle position. We're gonna hit a sweet spot where you just feel like this feels the easiest. As we go up, we're gonna start hitting a range again where we start get to that overextension and you'll get that sign and we just wanna find out where that is. So we're changing the saddle from minus five to... Minus two. Minus two. Just wanna see what, what your feeling is when I do that. Yeah, I mean, it, it changes the reach ever so slightly. So on you, feel, the... you feel more extended again, right? Yeah. So, but it did, it, it did have the feeling that you've extended more throughout the leg. Yeah. So if I just drop it another three mil, what does that do to you? The reason I kind of want to try to get you to have a saddle position that isn't as negative as that is there's just quite a few consequences to that. And major one is trying to keep your body in the right position on the saddle. You're actually going to be coming forward a lot which would be lower, which would be, this is where a lot of people might have thought you have a low saddle height. You come forward so much, you don't have the ability to extend as you push down, you find that as you're going past the pedal stroke because you're coming off the back of the saddle. Um, so it, it sh it's, it's more about being more efficient, uh, having more control of your entire body and actually you're working through that. So I know some people do know their saddle because actually it's taking away pressure, but I don't think that was what was the, uh, reasoning behind why you did it. So the first thing we're gonna do is come to, come to the shoes and we're gonna have a look at cleat alignment. So cleat fore and aft on the shoe. Earlier on, I put that marking on that first met head through on both your feet. And that is to give us a guide to look at that and compare that to where the pedal is positioned. So if we put, come to a stop, put your left foot forward at horizontal. So you can see here very clearly, I can, I can dig my finger on it. This is currently where first metatarsal sits within the shoe. It's in reference to pedal axle. So center of pedal axle to first met head. Generally speaking, you want the center of the pedal to sit behind the first met head. Some people kind of do this and go in line. They call it, you know, ball of the foot against center of the pedal. But largely speaking, to get more control, more kind of neutral feeling of the forefoot, you want to get that first met head in front of the center of the pedal. How much by? Sometimes you are restricted by the shoe. Um, a lot of bike fitters, we all train to kind of go anywhere from 10, 10 mil and above. Um, so I would say this is still uh, a suitable cleat alignment at the moment. Your forefoot is 
uh, sorry, your first metatarsal, it's further forward than that centro pedilaxal. So we're in a good starting point on that left foot. Let's have a look at the right, so switch legs. This is something that someone could do at home though, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, very like easy. They yeah. could tape up their shoe, yeah. they could find their first metatarsal, they and can then align it with their front foot. Align it with that, yeah. So again, same thing on this foot. First metatarsal sits forward of the centre of the pedal. So alignment wise, we're okay to start with. Right, so hands are gonna go in the drops. You did this on your bike earlier, you did a balance test and you fell, you started to fall forward. I'm gonna just do a series of balance tests with you to see if we can make any improvements in weight distribution. To do that, I need to put a bit more resistance. So you're gonna to start to pedal again, keep the weight driving through the pedals, try not to uh, stop that momentum and just for a few seconds see if you see if you can at all remove the hands from the bars and then back on okay right power down on the pedals i mean just it's it's a lot of like abdominal tensing let's see let's test again let's see yeah. one more back So, drive through the pedals. I mean, that, don't, that feels, yeah, I guess, in essence. Bit, a bit easier, yeah. But just, it, yeah. It, there is certainly core, core effort involved in doing this. Yeah. But more importantly, you're not just falling immediately no. and taking your hands off. It feels like that's my pedal stroke, that I'm centered over it more. Yeah. From my knee perspective. Right. Whereas before, it felt like I was I don't know what clock, clock you're facing. Yeah, it felt yeah. like I was, felt like before my 12 was, my 12 o'clock was a one o'clock. Yeah, fine. Now, now you feel it like feels more your 12 like a 12 o'clock. Well, there's another way of looking at this. So um, if you stop pedaling and bring your left foot and your uh, aligned to your right foot, so you can see a spirit level on your crank palm. Um, a lot of us bike fitters, we like to use this method, which is knee over pedal. So what you're looking for here is a alignment thing between center of pedal and somewhere between center of knee. This is to uh, adapt the sound fore and off. I've been adapting it just by doing that balance testing. Some, a lot of us miss this point out and just don't really go through it like this. I just found, find it's a bit more effective. We can also go through a uh, knee over pedal kind of spindle. This is a really old technique that people have used from early on where you had like a plumb line dropping over. Oh, you could get a broom. You, you if you, broom. If you yeah. were like, so if you were at home and you wanted to right. start, like in, from a start point, yeah. get a broom, put it on the floor, line it up with the... With the with centre pedal, yeah, of course. And you can see the pedal where your knee is, yeah. And where your knee is. So, we still potentially could go a bit further back if I wanted to based on this. Yeah. But it's, I don't really want to focus it on what that alignment looks like. I want you to be what you feel is easier for you. Yeah. One thing massively that has changed as I started pushing you back, you no longer lift your heels as like you did. So that was clearly due to your saddle going forward, your foot went up as yeah. you went forward. Starting at my one o'clock yeah. position rather than my... Exactly, so you were trying to hit power phase at a certain point by lifting, lifting your foot over, you're now not doing that. So I think ultimately you only did that because of where the saddle was. I mean, it, for me, it, it feels like I've come right back. So it's like, it, it, it does feel like a very different yeah, pedal Yeah, different stroke. experience, yeah, yeah. But like you said, I, like the, the ability to- Stay there and drive through, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. That, this, whole, this whole section feels completely different. Yeah. The reach feels, I don't want to say like the same, it just feels just as feel, nice yeah. as it always has. That's good, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it, yeah it's still quite a yeah. bit longer. Yeah. And I did originally had a longer stem on this, and I shortened the stem a bit yep. um, <clears throat> to try and create, I guess, this more, you know, this more. But it's funny because I, I really struggled to try and find this position myself. I'm not very. Yeah, yeah. For me, I, like that kind of reach and from the front end. Felt okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But, I, but it also felt okay before, before when yeah. it was like quite yeah. cramped. So it's like, you know, because I'm quite used to taking loads of weight, of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the weight in terms of on the, so no, I think um, the, biggest, the biggest difference is my, 
yeah. drive back, angle back bottom, relative yeah. to my hips to, to, the, to the feet, effectively yeah. the cleats. And I think the, 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 uh, the results you're going to get is going to be, you're going to feel first few sessions, the whole lower body feels different. Hopefully there's outcomes of, you know, increases in, in power, yeah. ability and, and the longevity of power. So yeah, summarize changes on your bike, your saddle went down, but then went back to change that distance towards the feet. The feet also went forward because the cleat positions changed. So, so essentially from the foot to the hip, we've just created a greater difference in, in that way. Saddle nose came up a bit as well. So that also helped you stay back on that saddle. Didn't actually change much at the front, but it, the distances obviously changed because of what happened there. Two, the two things to take from this bike is you, you, your optimal from today would be going to a 40 centimeter bar and a 172 and a half crank. So if I was to sum this up, like the, the thing that I found really interesting that I would say that I, would, that I wasn't. clearly wasn't able to replicate on my own without yeah. coming to see you is the relativeness of my hips to effectively my foot yeah. center cleat position yeah. that creates what I'm hoping is going to be a better like drive system. This is, to me feels about comfort, yeah. right? It feels about this stuff, front end feels about comfort once you've sorted out. Once you've sorted out that, yeah. That, and that's yeah. what I wasn't able to achieve on my own, yeah. which for me kind of adds the value. <clears throat> and bear in mind, I'm coming to this from not having come for an injury or anything no, like yeah, that, you know. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, it sounds silly, but like my reach and my mobility as a human has from 18 years old has been the same as it is now yeah. at 41 years yeah, old. So yeah, like yeah. that hasn't changed. But being able to now, I'm hoping, improve the, my, like my drive system, like as in the, right. the way my, yeah. my engine is yeah, yeah, connected yeah. to the drivetrain or whatever, feels, I feel more connected. Yeah. No, you look, you look more connected. It just looked... It, yeah. it, again, back to that whole, if I was just doing it based on what I think looked better, you just look better on the bike than it did before. 